Welcome to the Empathy Lens. Please shift your field of view to one of the title graphics. John! Look at you! Oh my gosh. Okay, so parking was okay? Oh, it was fine. Was All right. Oh my gosh, you look fantastic. I love Thank this. You. Thank you so much. I love what you do with your hair. Thanks. Okay, so that's Dr. Brickley. He heads the Anthropological Research Program and is in charge of the Middle Eastern Archaeological Lab. Okay. He's here? Of course he's here. You're applying for his vacant position. He is on the committee. So, believe it or not, he is getting promoted to be associate dean. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, focus on your research. Focus on the research. Okay, I have to go be a committee member. You got this. It's going to be so good. I got it. Yes, you're going to nail it. Thank you. Sean! Welcome! Sean? <laughs> okay, we're informal. Dr. Brickley. Dr. Carlton Brickley. Doctor. Got it. That is stunning. Is that woven into your hair? Whoa. Excuse me. Gabonese? Yes, I, I toured Western Africa last summer. Uh, not uh, research per se. I didn't realize you were from Gabon. I'm from Baltimore. I mean, where you're really from? Where your family's from? Seriously? Actually, I don't know. This was a birthday present from my brother. <sighs> Keep it cool. Breathe. Well, you, your brother certainly has exotic taste. <laughs> it really is a Beautiful accent in your hair, Sean. Okay, awkward. Please, let's start. Uh, am I sitting here? Uh, please, uh, take your seats. Mm. Okay, mm. thank you. Mm. Mm. Breathe. You want this. You got this. We're still waiting for Dr. Daniels, but we can get started. Let's go around and introduce ourselves to Sean. You too? I'll start. Welcome, Dr. Blaylock. Finally. I'm Dr. Lisa Chambers. I identify as she, her, hers. Sociocultural anthropology, gender, queer studies. I've been in the department for seven years. Dr. Monica Dykstrom. This is my fifth year as a professor here. I teach biological and evolutionary anthropology, and my research focuses on brain evolution and the origins of language. Welcome, Dr. Blaylock. Thank you. Hey, guys. So sorry, traffic was a mess. <laughs> Did we flip our interviews? No, no changes. Uh, Sean, this is Dr. Daniels. Sean, of course. Dr. Daniels. Davis Daniels, nice, nice to meet you. you. Sean. You thought I was a dude. I got tied up, dropping my daughter at Pre-K. <laughs> you got any kids? My, um, I... You can't ask me that. They've got a terrific program on campus, pre-K through six. If oh. you're planning... You are fishing. Uh, I'm sorry, is this part of the application process? Because I really don't think I need to respond to this. I'm not biting. What? Oh. No. No, that's your business. You're right. Let's respect Sean's time here. It's just one of the terrific programs that we have as faculty on campus. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, Dr. Daniels. Please, let's begin. I'm Dr. Frank Walford, Chair of the Department of Anthropology, and we're interviewing today for the position of Assistant Professor of Anthropology, a tenure-track position. We have a few questions we're asking all of the candidates. Thank you, Dr. Walford. I look forward to the opportunity to prove to you and the committee that I would be a great fit for this position. What did I say? I just started. Um, and I'm excited for the opportunity to become part of this community. First, tell us about your teaching experience. Uh, were you teaching while you were a graduate student at Berkeley? 
Um, I taught undergraduate seminars in my first year in the PhD program, as well as receiving the Chancellor's Opportunity Fellowship. I received my first teaching position in my second year. You were teaching courses as a doctoral candidate? Graduate student instructor. I was teaching seminars in research and field practices. I see. Graduate student instructor. That's correct. Um, it's a very competitive application process. I'm familiar with their program. Uh, of course, of course. No disrespect intended, Dr. Daniels. Um, my advisor, my mentor was Dr. Jennifer Conkley. Well, is. She is my advisor. Oh. We received her letter uh, yesterday. A bit late. <laughs> I'll provide copies to the committee. Yeah, that's not a surprise for a Jennifer, old girl. <laughs> what does that even mean? You need to step down. Well, after receiving my doctorate, Dr. Conkley assigned me head of the GeoSwap lab. GeoSwap? Mm -hmm. Geoarchaeology and Southwest Asia Prehistory Laboratory. That lab has a fantastic reputation. Emilio Rodriguez came from... Emilio, <laughs> he's one of my top students. Yeah, he's in our graduate program now. I love his curious brain and the way he makes connections that other students just can't see. And sometimes professors. <laughs> <laughs> Glimmering brilliance. Mm -hmm. So you designed GeoSwap? Well, co-designed, Dr. Conkley and myself. Essentially, it was for training graduate and undergraduate students in lithic technology. Co-designed it with Dr. Conkley. Gotcha. Breathe. Bring it home. That's correct. And as an adjunct, I was also teaching undergraduate courses as well. You left Berkeley after a year? You're lecturing at the University of Maryland in Towson. Yes, my, well, I had to go back home to be with family. Do I tell them about my dad? I understand. That's a huge decision to make. I'm sure they greatly appreciated your choice. Do I tell them about the intervention? Would you like to share more about your decision? Well, my dad was sick, but um, he's better now. This is getting too personal. <clears throat> um, can we move on to something else? It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for this opportunity and for your time. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you, Dr. Blaylock. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we share our thoughts about the candidate, I am asking you to anonymously share whether you support the candidate. First impressions without being tainted by the opinions of others on the committee. Write a yes or no on the slip of paper. Great. And let's hear some comments. I thought she was good. Yeah, solid. Oh, I have a couple concerns, but yeah, good candidate. What kind of concerns? I mean, I don't want to dominate the conversation. I want to hear what others think. Wait, I want to hear what your concerns are because they might be the same as mine. Well, I don't know. I, she's great on paper. Well, she's in a hot field of research right now. But... But I have some concerns about her communication skills. Social skills, emotional intelligence, I don't know what to call it. I found her to be kind of edgy, bristly. Like she got really triggered by the whole family thing. She got really triggered by the whole family thing because that question is completely out of bounds. It's actually against the law. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 it was a, I wasn't thinking clearly, all right? I, I, I'm sorry, but I didn't ask her if she was married. Right? I, I, okay, I should have asked about her kids, but you know, I, we talk about our families all the time. And you know, I just, it's important for us to know each other both personally and professionally so we can 
you know, support each other and work as a team. And I was just trying to get a sense of what she would be like on our team. And I wasn't feeling too great, okay? I just wasn't feeling it, but that's just me. No, I totally agree, it's not just you. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I, I felt the same way. I can't believe I'm hearing this. I mean, you asked her an inappropriate question, an illegal question, and then you're calling her edgy and bristly? At Frank? Yeah, we should focus on her qualifications as a candidate, not whether she wins any popularity contests. Thank you. And speaking of her qualifications, look at how much she's had published in the last year alone. I did not find her to be edgy or bristly. I found her to be direct, candid, an incredible teacher and a brilliant young mind. You're just saying that because you're her friend. You can't tell me you're not biased. We're all biased. And I'm looking at Dr. Blaylock as a professional colleague. Yes, we are good friends, but that goes to your point about wanting a personal connection. We've all brought in colleagues for consideration on a position. Our duties on this committee are to find the best candidate. <sighs> Dr. Brickley, since Dr. Blaylock would be taking over your position, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, <clears throat> she does uh, have the qualifications, uh, the experience at Berkeley, but uh, well, there's there's something not right about her, and she left so suddenly. Lisa, yes, she's good on paper, but uh, I can't sign off on her. I want us to remember that we've already interviewed a couple really incredible teachers and scholars who were also great communicators and collaborators. Is Sean a great teacher and scholar? Her research is impeccable, and she's an excellent teacher. No doubt. Is she the world's best communicator and collaborator, though? I'm not so sure. I think her emotions uh, may have gotten the best of her at times. Hold on. Just. Hold on, is there anything in what she submitted to us that indicates she's not a good collaborator? Well, <clears throat> uh, she's uh, collaborated on one, two, three, four, five peer-reviewed articles. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's worked on two book chapters with other authors. She co-developed a nationally recognized research lab. and. We've reaped the benefits of that with Emilio, a, a star graduate student. I mean, she has stellar teaching recommendations, and I just don't see, like, what am I missing here? Well, what I think you're missing is that she has demonstrated her ability to collaborate on publishing or writing and communicate and teaching, but there's a question about her ability to collaborate with her peers on committee work, grant writing, fundraising, the sorts of things that we're asked to do and don't get a lot of credit for. Uh, these aren't the high profile things, but these are important. Look at her CV, there's no grant writing experience at all. We are seeking the best candidate. It seems like she's been single-mindedly focused on her own agenda. What? We're missing something here. We're looking for someone who can be the face of our research program someone who can glad hand and work our alums and squeeze them for as much money as possible. Someone who can collaborate with her peers to submit for multi-million dollar grants and actually win them and then implement them. Do we want her for that role? She's great, she really is, but... Our enrollments are way down, we're facing a lot of budget issues, and we need to attract a ton of grant money. Now, today, can we really take a risk right now? I kind of agree. Like, I just don't think people are going to like her. Uh, has it occurred to any of you that the reason she wasn't all cute and friendly and easy to get along with had something to do with the way we spoke to her, the way we treated her? The family thing, I know. No, Davis, it's not just that. I mean, do you remember the first thing you said to her? 
I asked her where she was from. No, you asked her where she's really from. <laughs> okay, yeah, so? So she was visibly affected by that and it changed how she was in the interview because of what you said to her. Lisa is right. Uh, we can't judge her for how she responded to personal questions. We have to focus on what she's done. Well, I've made up my mind. Great. How about everyone else? <laughs>